I know people are still working on the blackjack, and that's okay. Um, but I want to keep moving to talk about some new topics. Uh, what I plan to do is once I go over a few things to sort of get everyone ramped up to have more work sessions, uh, or sessions more, how do I want to say, more like flexible, where we can have people that are comfortable with where they are, work on in lab, and maybe I'm working with students that have more questions about a particular thing, or something like that. So I aim to be flexible as far as that goes. Um, but I am going to go on to the next application, which shows a, a, several new things. Um, and we'll take a look at it and review those things. And um, we won't necessarily review every line of code in it, but we'll review the stuff that's new and different. Because remember, the goal isn't to be able to duplicate what you see here, but the goal is to learn about some new ways of doing things. All right, so that's what we're going to focus on. And so let's start out, and today we'll do an overview of it and talk about the key concepts involved in this and probably dive into talking about a couple of them. So this is a flag quiz from Deedle. And I think this is kind of fun. I think when I was a kid, I was fascinated with different countries and maps and flags and, and all that. But there's a lot of these that I don't recognize, to be honest. So we'll take a look at it, and we'll test our knowledge. And we will also... Uh, learn some new different techniques. I'm going to start up this first, my emulator, which I've converted back to English. It was stuck on Spanish for a while. And we'll run this. I want to run it to give you a sense of how it works. We'll talk about the bits of it that are different from applications that we've seen before. All right. This starts off flag quiz. It gives you a quiz where you can have to identify the flag, what country that's for. The choices are Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Morocco, or Swaziland. I am going to guess Swaziland. And I was right. Display Swaziland in green. Notice it did a little transition there between it, a little animation. All right. Somalia, Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, French Polynesia. I have no idea. The first one I was like 60% sure. This one I am 0% sure. Any guesses? Guinea-Bissau? Incorrect. Oh, and it shook its head to show you it was wrong. All right. Notice now, by the way, that that is disabled now that we've picked it. All right. Somalia, Algeria, French, Polynesia. I don't think it's Algeria. Algeria, I, I seem to remember, has a green flag. Don't ask me if that's right or not. We'll Google this after we're done. Uh, I'm going to guess Somalia. And it is. All right, Ethiopia, Guyana, Burundi, or the Democratic Republic of the Congo? I don't think it's Ethiopia. All right. What this does is this gives you 10 of them. And it, it counts how many guesses it takes you to get all 10. So if you got 10 out of 10 on the first guess, then you would have had 10 guesses to guess 10 flags, and so you'd get 100%. If it took you, let's say, two guesses on each one, it would give you 10 guesses, or 10 right, 20 guesses, it would give you 50%. 
So that's how it grades you. Uh, try this one. Try Zambia. They're not making life easy on us. Like, where's, like, United States, Canada? I'm going to say Netherlands Antilles. Yeah. Suriname, Tonga, Congo, it's really Peru's flag, okay, Norfolk Island, I cheated, I was, when I tested this out, I saw that one and remembered it, okay, Sierra Leone, New Zealand, Angola or Namibia, I'm going to say Angola. This, I believe, is, is some kind of bug, because I saw this before. This, that's Libya. Libya is not just a green block, the flag. I'm not sure what the bug is with that one. This one I know. That's Argentina. Okay, 17 guesses it took me to get 10 of them right. So that's 10 divided by 17. That's like a 58%. Okay, reset quiz. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to tilt this landscape. When we tilt it landscape, notice we have a different screen. All right? There is options on this side, and the game is over here. Okay? Oh, I guessed it right accidentally, trying to expand it. So there's options over here and the game part over here. If I rotate it again, it resets every time it rotates, by the way, which I don't know, neither here nor there. The options are actually on a separate activity. So, first thing that's different, this does some animations. Second thing that's different, the screen is different, not just cosmetically, in other words, it doesn't just look different, whether it's a landscape or portrait. There's actually more stuff on the page. In fact, the stuff that is on one page in landscape is on two activities on the portrait version. And if you think about it, I, I'm hoping there isn't like a lot of duplicated code, right? Because if it was duplicated code, that would kind of be bad. So I'm hoping that that extra functionality, the being able to set options, lives in one place and is simply used in two different places. All right? Third difference is there's options here. When we click on this, we have options. We can say how many choices there are. And, of course, that affects how difficult the game is. We can say there's two four, six, or eight choices. The, the, more, the more the number of choices, the harder it's going to be, obviously. Because then, you know, if, if it's only two choices, you got a 50-50 chance even if you don't know anything, right? If there's eight of them, well, if you're just guessing, it's going to be hard for you to get them correct. So we can change it to say that there are two choices only. We can also choose what regions we want to see. All right? So I picked Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Oce or I picked Africa, Oceania, and South America. So you can pick by continent. And then when you go back, the game resets.
that, as I, that had nothing to do with the class. I just was on a roll and I wanted to keep it up. All right. The other thing that's a little interesting about this is how does it give you the right answers? How does it, in other words, how does it give you the options? All right. In other words, if you pick, whether you pick two, four, six, or eight, it has to make sure that the correct answer is one of those options. And it has to make sure that the correct answer is not in the same spot every time. Like the correct answer isn't like button number one. All right? So it has to make sure that it's in a different place uh, or it's potentially in a different place each time. So that's a bit of functionality that's important to do as well. All right, so let's dive in and take a look at this. All right, if we look at this, we break it down and take inventory of what we have. We have, in our layout files, we have two of them that are prefixed with the word activity. All right? And one of them is content main. And there's two versions of that one. Content main and content main that is at least 700 dp width and in landscape. All right. We have content settings, fragment main, and fragment settings. Okay. Let's go and identify what each of these XML files do. I'll put the list up on the board and we'll identify what they do. Because it's a little confusing, I, I admit, when I'm doing this. All right? So, I'm going to draw the screen both portrait and landscape. So, in portrait, our main XML for the main window is content main. That's the main layout for the activity. With landscape, it's also content main. Right? Remember how those resource qualifiers work. Android itself decides which version of contact main, uh, content main we want to display. Right? If it meets the conditions of this, which was, I think, 700 dp with at least in landscape it gets the special version if it doesn't meet those conditions it gets the simpler version all right so that is content main there's another activity if you're in portrait mode because if you remember, there's a little gear up here. Try to draw a gear for settings. If you click this, <clears throat> you go to the second activity. For portrait mode. And that is called activity settings. That's the XML for that guy. Now, let me 
make sure I'm getting this right. For the landscape view, there's actually what are called two fragments. Fragment setting and fragment main. In both of those, because this is the bigger layout, the more spacious layout, both of those live in the same landscape file. All right. So there's activity contains fragment main and this one contains fragment settings. So I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm missing two. I'm missing activity main. Oh, activity main. Activity main is simply a holder for these content mains. So activity main contains these two content mains. All right, and activity setting is going to contain the content setting. Mostly right. I did think I get a little confused. Let's, let's open them up and look at them. Let's try to straighten this out. If we look at this. If we go to the main activity. Notice it's loading up activity main. So activity main is sort of like the frame that holds everything. And activity main contains content main. So we have activity main, which holds content main, which will be this one if it's landscape, um, portrait rather, and this one if it's landscape. All right. In the case of it being portrait, Content main contains fragment main. All right. In the case of it being landscape, 
content main contains settings fragment and the activity fragment. Content settings is for the other, oh, content setting is what gets swapped into content main, I think, uh, or into activity main in portrait mode. So the only one I didn't have up there is content settings, and that gets put in activity main if you're in portrait mode, and that contains the fragment settings. So we look at here, and we have main activity. That contains a main activity fragment. We have a settings activity and a settings fragment. Let's look at this both ways. Let's try to work our way through the interface today. So, when I open up the main activity, let's assume that I'm in portrait. All right? If I'm in portrait, I set the layout to be activity main. There's only one activity main. And it contains content main. There are two content mains, the first one and the second one. If, it's, if I'm in portrait mode, I'm going to load this one, which contains the main activity fragment. And that would be this XML. And the main activity fragment contains all the things that you expect it to, change, to, to, to show. The text view that says how many questions are on. The image view, which shows you the flag a text view that says guess the country, and then a linear layout of buttons. And there's actually three linear layouts, or rather four linear layouts, each with a pair of buttons. Notice that they gave you, your options are even numbers, two, four, six, eight. So if you pick two, it's only going to show one of those linear layouts. If you pick four, it's going to show two of them. Six is going to show three. Eight is going to show four. They chose to sort of limit the number of options. The programmer in me says you should be able to check two through eight options and check any number, whether it be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They, in simplifying the code a little bit, decide to say, well, we're going to allow them to pick twos because I'm going to put those buttons up in linear layouts of two, and I'm either going to show the whole linear layout or I'm going to hide the whole linear layout. I'm not going to mess around with showing one of the buttons in the layout and not showing the other or not do something where we have uh, a, a view that dynamically gets buttons added depending on how many we pick. That would be the more flexible way. Is everyone following what I'm saying? They, they made, uh, the options they made, they limited the flexibility a little bit, but it simplifies it a great deal. Would this be substantially a better game if you could pick odd numbers of options? No, not really. There's always a trade-off when you're programming between the theoretical best way to do something and practical, we need to get this done because our deadline is certain day, and therefore I'm going to do what I need to to get it done, even if it means taking a shortcut here or there. So I would describe this as a little bit of a shortcut, which doesn't bother me because it doesn't really substantially compromise the quality of the game in my book. More than ten, more than eight options is probably, would be really tough anyhow, you know. The programmer in me always says, why put a limit on it or the number of it? Well, there's also practical concerns. So I think in this case it's perfectly acceptable to limit it to eight. All right. So the page loads, we're assuming that we are in portrait mode. All right. Let me expand this. 
Therefore, our content main, our, uh, our activity main contains the first version of content main, which means it's only going to show you the one activity. All right, preference manager, preference manager is setting the default values and it's pulling the values from our XML preferences. I think that's something new. Our XML preferences. that shows the preferences that exist. And there's two kinds of preferences. There's this preference where you have a list that you can choose one of, and then there is a list that you can choose multiple for. So when you chose the number of guesses buttons that appear, you're limited to just one choice, two, four, six, or eight. The default value is four. All right? When you choose this, you can choose as many as you want. Now, let's run this again. Are those preferences persistent? Or if I run this again, does the same preferences show up? Default is two, and the regions are all of them. So it sure looks like those preferences are persistent, that they stay with what they were set at. We'll have to see how they do that. This is simply defining what the preferences are. All right? And there's a preference manager to have this. something that we're doing inside of our app to decide which mode that we're in, right? Because our code has to know which mode that we're in for a number of reasons. So, if our device is small, if it's not large or extra large, then it's not a phone, according to this. It's a tablet. So if we look here, we assume it's a phone. If we're dealing with a phone, it's going to force the orientation to be portrait. Let me try to pull up. Is that why when I I'm, when I run this because I'm using an Android phone emulator, it's not showing up portrait then? Yeah, I mean, probably. I can't get the landscape. Yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know if I have any phones set up here. Yeah, that's probably why that would be. All right, so on start. Preferences have changed, which they will change when we initialize them. 
what we're going to do is we're going to grab the quiz fragment, which is the main activity fragment, find the ID called quiz fragment. Now, let's look at this. We're pretending we're in portrait mode, but let's look. Quiz fragment is the ID of the quiz fragment that is in the content main, which is the content main used in portrait mode. If we look at the landscape one, it is also called quiz fragment. All right? That's not a coincidence that they called them the same thing. This code, in other words, this line of code will work regardless of what mode the user is in, whether they're viewing it landscape or portrait. Because at this point, both content mains have a piece that is called quiz fragment. Is that clear? Make sense to everyone? So, we don't, have to, we don't have to wonder, gee, does, um, you know, am I in landscape or portrait mode? Doesn't matter. Either way, there's a fragment, all right, that's called quiz fragment that appears in the content main. So, we call on that. main activity fragment, that's the quiz fragment. We call on it methods to update the number of rows, update the re, uh, regions, reset quiz, and then we set the preference change to false. So in the main activity fragment, we have methods again. Update guess rows, update regions. What does update guess rows do? It loops through, it figures out from the preferences how many choices there are, divides it by two, and that's how many buttons it's going to enable. That's how many rows of buttons it's going to enable. All right. So if we're to run this, String choices, we're going to grab from it how many items we want to see. We parse that, change it into a, an integer, and divide by two. Because we want to see for however many options we want, we want half as many rows, because each row has two options. We hide everything. And then we show the ones that we want to show. are the countries that we guess. Okay. So we'll, let's, let's run it. So let's say I'm coming in here, all right, and I go into options, and I say I want to see six choices. When we come back, it's going to reset the game, and we'll have three rows of two buttons. Three rows of two buttons. All right. How did it do that? It got from the preferences that there were six options. It divides by two to say that corresponds to three rows. It loops through an array, and we'll look at this array in a minute here because we haven't seen this array yet. 
We loop through this array and hide everything. Okay? We hide everything. Uh, and then we go back and show the ones that we want to show. All right? That way, if we went from 8 to 6, we first hide everything. So that would hide all four of the rows. Then we go and show three of the rows. That way, one won't be stuck showing that we don't want to be stuck showing. Notice when this lo loads, we create a array of linear layouts. All right? An array of linear layouts. And we set there to four. Four linear layouts, four rows. And we set the first one, the first element, to row one linear layout. The second one to row two linear layout. Row three, row four. So if we look at the fragment main, each of those linear layouts with buttons has a name in it. Row one, or that was row three. Row, row four, row three. Row two. And row one. So, how do I want to say this? They kind of cheated a little bit. All right, because they hard coded those things in. Ideally, like I said, it's good when there's no limits to the code and it's totally parameterized. But here they said, you know what, two to four, two to eight is a good set of options. So I'm just going to make an array of those and I'm going to loop through that array and I'll be set. All right. Normally, when you see repeated code like this, it's a sign of a little bit of a compromise. It could probably be done better, all right? But it's good enough. So when does this even appear? This even appears because we have defined in the content main that this is a fragment of this type. So when we go and render this page, when activity main loads and we load content main, content main has that fragment in it. All right? So it's going to go and create that fragment and do everything it needs to do. Where did we go here? Main activity fragment. And then we set the question. Uh, text to say that we're on question one of ten, and then it returns the view associated with the fragment to display. Now let's compare that. What? What? How do I want to say this? What I want to go over initially is just how the initial screen looks differently depending on whether I'm we're portrait or landscape. So I sort of went through how the screen looks in the case of portrait. Portrait only has that one uh, fragment, the main activity fragment, in its content main. How then does it look different in the case of landscape? Well, in landscape, we're going to load up activity main just like before. That contains content main. But because we're in landscape and we're on a large device, we get two fragments. One of them is the settings activity fragment, and one of them is the quiz fragment. So we get both of those side by side. All right? Both of those fragments load. All right? So we won't go over how the settings fragment loads. That's actually pretty straightforward. But it loads in the left-hand portion of the screen 
and the main activity fragment loads in the right portion of the screen. Now what we haven't gone over yet is how the questions are formed and, and all that. We'll go over that next time. The other thing we'll go over is the right and wrong uh, choices. But notice this. Notice that the main activity itself is pretty thin. The game logic exists in the main activity fragment. So the choosing of what countries we're gonna we're gonna pick, the choosing of the right and wrong answers, evaluating whether the person got the question right or not. All those things happen in the main activity fragment. So it's not duplicated. All right? It's just a matter that that act, main activity fragment exists in two different places. One is on a content main that only has it. The other is on a content main that has the settings fragment along with it. When we get to settings, it'll be the same thing. All the functionality concerning settings happens in the settings fragment. All right? The whole idea of fragments is think of a fragment as being almost like a mini activity. All right? And the advantage of them is you can then piece together an app that allows there to be one or multiple fragments on the screen at the same time, depending on whether there's enough real estate or not. So in the case of there being portrait or in being a phone, all right, we're only going to have room for one activity on the screen at a time. But for bigger devices like tablets, if we are in landscape mode, then we have space to put the fragments side by side. So a fragment is sort of like a mini activity. It's self-contained and it can live inside an activity by itself or with other fragments. Okay, I notice it's 6.05, so that's all we have time for today. Uh, we'll continue along these lines. Uh, next time, I want to touch on the animation, and I want to touch on just exactly how those fragments generate the questions, evaluates whether the questions are right or wrong, and so on. All right? And time permitting, we can talk about the settings as well, but I suspect the settings will probably go into next week. Questions on this? I did want to talk about your next lab. And I know that uh, some of you are still working on blackjack. I don't want to get you lost or intimidated. So I plan on giving you time to work on these things. All right. Uh, I've talked kind of to everyone uh, and I've seen where you're at and you're all making, pro you all have either completed or are making progress to completing the blackjack game, which is great. Your next lab is the old memory game. Uh, Ooh, I think when I was a kid, the game show on TV was called Concentration. And it works like this. And I want you to do it with the same deck and cards objects that we had. All right? That we used in the blackjack one. This will be an interesting way to show you that, hey, we can write some code that we can reuse. So it was nice taking the time to write a good card object that we can reuse uh, in another case. A memory game works like this. Oh, I thought it was an online version of it. You just lay out the cards face down. All right? Person picks two cards. If they match, they keep them. If they don't match, you flip them back around. So the idea is to remember. So if I click here and I get the Ace of Diamonds, and I click here and I get the Queen of Hearts, all right, 
if it's my next turn and I click over there and get the Queen of Hearts, it's like, oh, I, I remember I seen the Queen of Hearts before. Where was it? Over here. And you click it, and then you pick that up. And you go until all the cards are gone. And the less clicks it takes you, the, the better job that you did. You could come up with some arbitrary way of scoring it if you wanted to. All right? Obviously, for this to work, you have to have duplicates of cards. All right? So your deck might get tweaked a little bit. All right? Or something might be tweaked. You might use the deck class and have another class to ensure that if you grab ten cards, that five of them, that five of them match the other five. All right? Because... It would be a horrible game if none of them matched each other and you were clicking away all day and you never picked them up. All right? You mean like you get two two of hearts? Yeah, two two of hearts. Okay. Right. Well, could you just get five cards and then duplicate yep. them? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that would be the way to do it. You get, so however many cards you want, like, you know, let's say we did it with five cards. Yeah, it could be five. I'm trying to think of arranging them on the screen. Um, I'm just thinking of ten, and then you would, or you could do nine yeah. or arrange them three. Well, you don't want to have an odd number. Okay. Because then so one of them is going to be unmatched, right? Okay. So it, it needs to be an even number. Yeah. So maybe maybe sixteen cards, four by four, or or uh, uh, two by two, four by four, whatever. Now. I totally lost my train of thought. If you did that, you'd get half those many cards. So if I did it with 16 cards, I'd get eight cards. I'd duplicate those, those eight cards, and then I would shuffle that mini deck. All right? So we don't need 52 cards. No. And, but what my suggestion would be is still use the deck object. So I would make like a mini deck. I'm using the word mini deck, but maybe you can think of a better name for it. I would use like a mini deck that got the first eight cards off of the, the, the deck. It would then duplicate them. So I had eight pairs or 16 cards. Then it would shuffle them, and then I would lay them out on the screen. Now, again, we're going to do this incrementally. So don't think about, like, everything all at once. Think of, like, the first thing that you want to do. Maybe the first thing you want to do is, and I'm going a little long today. I'm sorry. I'll try to make it up sometime. But maybe the first thing you do is lay out a four-by-four four array of cards, four rows, four columns, and make it so that when you click on them, it shows those two cards, waits a second, and then flips them back over. Maybe that's all you do. You don't do. You don't even worry about whether they matched or not. Just work on having the on-click methods flip the ver flip the card and and show it. All right. It'll probably break your heart, but you don't need to use recycler views for this. If you could think of another way to do it, you could do it with like tables, rows, multiple layout view uh, or linear layouts like this guy did it for that, and so on. We've had. Good practice with recycle views, but all good things have to come to an end, right? So we can take a break from them. And I know what you're thinking. It's like, yeah, what well, we learned that we're, we're taking a break. But you can use them if you want to. All right? I don't have an issue with you using them. I'm just saying if it makes your life easier, then you don't have to use them. Or maybe you don't use them for the first pass or whatever. All right. That's all I had. We'll see you over in lab.